What's going on? We are Sensible Prepper Live, and we are ready with Robbie Wheaton from Wheaton Arms. Hey, guys. And uh, check out Robbie Wheaton for all the Glock aftermarket parts. He also does a lot of custom work. In fact, you just put on a lot of uh, barrel ex or, or we got, we extensions for bolt extensions. Yep, just finished up threading a bunch of bolt handles this morning. So it's a fun little project to do. We got a bunch of those done heading back out to you guys. So if anybody's watching that's got a bolt with us right now, it's on its way back to you tomorrow. And just, all the Glock barrels, you yeah, got some new Glock we, barrels we in? We just put up several hundred more Glock barrels on the website this week. And uh, then our triggers, we've got some of our copper Flat triggers face. still in stock. Okay, yep. good, good. Flat yeah. face triggers are the best out there, guys, for Glock. Uh, but check out WheatonArms.com. Also, GoMedGear.com, yes, carrying medical supplies. And guys, you need to make sure you have your trauma kits, especially if you're out the range. Well, I'll tell you one of the coolest things that we've got right now with our with Go Med Gear is we've got something called build your own kit yeah you know there's, there's tons of kits out there and you guys you know if, if you went and bought a medical kit you go buy your medical kit and there's half the crap in there that you're like i'll never use this i'll never it's just you know sometimes you just take it out throw it in the trash because you're like i'm never <laughs> going to use this well we've got something on go med gear called build your own kit where you can go through and pick each individual item from in your even individual, I think band-aids are still in boxes of a hundred, but everything other than that, you can go through and just add individual items to your kit, build your own kit. We'll package the kit to you for you and ship it out. So check out Go Med Gear. And and this is something that's new for and I believe most of us from North American Rescue and yep. doing North American Rescue guys, is so one of the one stuff. of our big distributors. And then we've got a couple of other distributors that we use for uh for some of our other components. Right. But uh yeah. All high end, really good stuff, quality of stuff. You know, we're not talking about your, you know, Chinese import stuff. So <laughs> Thank God. It's uh, it's all really good stuff. The same stuff that you'll see if you go in the hospital. Our distributors are the same distributors that supply a lot of your hospitals. So yeah, check out Go Med Gear. Also, we really appreciate Sarah Mac for being over on the computer monitoring questions. We Adulting. are going to take some. Yeah, they're going to keep us straight. Um, and we also appreciate Sportsman's Guide. You get $20 off every $100 or more purchase using S-O-O-T-C-H, just Sooch. And uh, it's that's a great deal. And um, I mean, it's 20% off. You get up to $100. And got to sign up for their buyers. Their, uh, just totally buyers branded. Club. Buyers Club. That's the one. <laughs> got to sign up for the Buyers Club. You get free shipping on almost everything that you order. Big bulky items. It'll pay for itself just by signing up for the Buyers Club. Yeah. So there we go. All right. We are going to talk about bugging out and why it's a bad idea. And, and we've addressed it a number of times, but we have a number of things that we're going to kind of go through and, you know, bugging out. And this is what this is to me what bugging out is. You are a glorified refugee. That's what you are. And the mosquitoes are bad in the summer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the mosquitoes are terrible. So that's the that's it. OK, great. We're got, done. Got to stay home. So, there you go, guys. <laughs> now, bug out. Having a bug out plan is essential. Uh, you need to have a bug out plan, you know, because something could happen at your home. It could be compromised. Your house could catch on fire. I mean, there's a lot of things that could mm -hmm. happen. There could be a toxic spill. A few years ago, there was a toxic spill in our area. We had one over the weekend here. Tractor trailer wreck on 85. They evacuated people for like a two mile radius because of a, a chemical spill. No kid. Yep. Well, there you go. Right so, over the weekend. Bug out is essential to have a plan and possibly a bug out bag, but I would honestly consider more of a bug out vehicle with your stuff in there. It doesn't have to be an off-road, whatever. I mean, but we're going to look at that as well. You know, even FEMA says they have a list, a checklist of things that you need to have in mm -hmm. your home, but if you need to evacuate, they give you a checklist of things to carry and have it ready and put it in your vehicle. So, you know, bugging out is not totally out of the question mm -hmm. because there is definitely some room for bugging out. But guys, it has to be your absolute last resort. And so we're going to talk about some of the things that come up with bugging out and why you shouldn't do it, <laughs> yeah. why you shouldn't do it. Uh, but obviously, the first thing is you do need a bug out plan. That, that is essential. Now, for us, we have what we call our get home bags. Mm -hmm. Everyone in the family has a get home bag and we keep that in our vehicle. We make sure we keep the supplies in there. We don't steal out of that bag. Yep. And that's one of the things for years I've been really guilty of. And so I have to be very diligent to make sure that all the essentials are there because you could be somewhere else and have to get home. 
And so a bug out, a bug home or get home bag, let me get this out, uh, is, is essential as well. And I highly recommend you have something there for your vehicle. Now, number one, the number one thing about a bug out situation is you're leaving everything. You're leaving mm -hmm. your supplies. If you have food stored up, you're leaving your toilet paper. I mean, you're leaving <laughs> it all. And guys, you know, you get on the road and you don't have but just what you have with you. Mm -hmm. And so that is the number one thing. The other thing, though, about and I need to back up about a bug out plan is one of the things about a bug out plan is you need to have a set location that you're heading to a set location. Uh, don't just get on the road and go, well, we're out of here and head into the woods uh, because you're not going to last long. Uh, but so first thing is you're leaving your supplies, you're leaving your medical supplies, mm -hmm. you're leaving your, um, you know, if you have a lot of ammunition, if you have a lot of guns, things like that. There's only so much of that you can carry with you. Really? You know, there's yeah. only so much room in your vehicle. And two, just the weight. That's right. You start putting a lot of weight in your vehicle. I mean, it's going to, in fact, for our, um, when we got our, uh, a lot of our long-term food storage, we went down to the Mormon cannery. We got a bunch of food. I mean, it puts us in really good shape, but we had a van at the time and the, it was actually riding on the wheels almost. I mean, every time we yeah. hit a bump. Mm -hmm. And so that's just the food. And so guys, you know, that's one of the things, you know, you need to be very mindful of. Now we're going to kind of go through this list because there's quite a few things. So we may go through it pretty quickly. I was, in fact, I'm going to put this list down in the description when this video is a permanent video. And this video will be on here. It'll be on the Sensible Prepper channel. Uh, okay. So number, number three, is uh, security. Now you have security in your home. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, and you should be setting up some kind of security plan. Last night about two o'clock in the morning, our driveway alarm went off. Those are very cheap, by the way, you can get those. It has a, a sensor that you put out. It's an infrared sensor, it picks it up at night, picks up whatever. And it's really pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it doesn't go off often unless there's really something there. That's right. And then we have a, an alarm inside that'll do a little chime or whatever. Well, and camera systems now, your Bluetooth wireless camera systems have, they're, they're very affordable. Right. You know, to be able to install, even if you just put one or two on the outside of your house to start with, you can get a, a good single camera for 150 bucks and be able to put that mounted on the outside of your house. They're waterproof, weatherproof. Most of them have floodlights with them as well to be right. able to light everything up. I mean, they're, they're a solid, solid investment. Now. Well, and you can get apps on your phone to, yep. to let you know. Ring, that's one you've used. That's one I've used. Yep. In fact, at his mother's house, when she first moved in with them because of medical reasons, you had somebody try to break into your house up there Yep. and got to see him, took pictures of him and even talked to him. Didn't mm -hmm. you tell him the police are on the way? Yep. I did. <laughs> so, uh, you know, security system is important to have. But when you're bugging out, you are vulnerable. Yes. You are vulnerable to whatever your family, you're just out there, you're in a vehicle, a vehicle can be a death trap. And so that is one thing about it is obviously security, you know, and you may have firearms and, and all that, but you know, that's a very hard thing to defend because most cars are made of aluminum and bullets mm -hmm. go right through them. Um, okay. So security now, number four is familiar terrain and one of the things about the militaries in, in armies and in, in battles and war is those that were very familiar with their terrain had the advantage. Absolutely. And so you had the advantage not only of your property, mm -hmm. but also of the roads that come in, how to make escapes. Uh, one thing that we do is uh, like my daughter, she has horses and she has them at a farm. And so she has a way to get home. And I've told her, I said, make sure that you know the alternate way. That's right. And wasn't there just recently, they had something going on somewhere where the road was blocked. She had to go a different direction. What's the thing? You should know at least three different ways to get home by the, by the main roads. You should have at least three different ways to get there. Right. And you should travel those different routes on a pretty regular basis because you don't get pigeonholed in to driving the same route every single day. Right. Right. That's right. And, uh, you know, and then too, it makes you familiar with what's going on That's around right. you. Uh, you know, a lot of times we have a certain path we take, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you're right. You get yep. in your car, you go to work, you go to Walmart or wherever. I don't go to Walmart, but you go to these places yep. and you don't take those alternate routes. And so it's good to know. Well, it's like, it's like hunters, you know, you go out in the woods, you find a deer, you find the trails that they walk. Why? Because they're creatures of habit. They walk the same trails day after day after day. Right. You find their travel routes, you set up on their travel route and you know that eventually that animal is going to travel on that route. Right. Humans are the same way. 
we get set in our mind a specific travel travel route that we go to different locations and that's the route that we take almost 100 percent of the time right right that's right so again familiar terrain also now and this was another this was actually one we've already addressed but being vulnerable being glorified refugees uh, I remember, well, I mean, we're seeing refugees right now pour across the border, but, mm -hmm. you know, even in Europe, but in World War II, you saw where a lot of battle torn areas, you see these families yep. carrying their possessions that's or right. having a cart or whatever, and they're just traveling with those goods. And that's all they have. Um, you know, it's funny. I, I just did a video. I haven't, it, it'll be posted next week, but it's lessons from the pioneers mm -hmm. back during the Western days and the Oregon Trail specifically, and traveling over seven states, 2,000 miles, and all the possessions and all the food and everything else to get them there was in this 80 square foot of space that they could yeah. fit in their wagon. And guys, you know, there's just not a lot of area. And they were very vulnerable, vulnerable to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And so you get yourself out. Um, okay, now, traffic. <laughs> there's a big one. In fact, the, the thumbnail for this video is a traffic jam. Yeah. It's just jammed up. Uh, a few years ago, we were coming back from NRA. We were just driving. We were coming back from Indianapolis, I believe it was, and we're going through Kentucky, and then all in the middle of nowhere, and they're just cars just backed up for miles. I mean, you could just see. And so we're sitting there in traffic, and we did a video. Actually, I, my buddy John and, and NC Hill Rodney, we did a video while we were there talking about the dangers of being in traffic. <clears throat> you know, let's say you have all your supplies. Mm-hmm. You lose those supplies. Well, you got a bug out bag, but that's three days max that's usually. Right. And so, you know, traffic jams, especially if there is a crisis, people are going to jam the roads. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then what you're going to have is you're going to have people that, that break down. You're going to have gas that's going to run out, which we're seeing that right now, guys. I'm going to tell you, if you haven't gotten gas, especially on the East Coast, yes. you better fill up your cars because there are already places running out of gas all around. Uh, Western North Carolina, I have friends up there and they were saying the only things available is diesel around here. So guys, just a side note, make sure you get some gas as soon as you can uh, and fill up your tanks. Now, with traffic, you know, and breakdowns, gasoline. One of the things we noticed, though, and it was really funny because we waited for about an hour. We were just kind of creeping along. Mm -hmm. People were getting very angry. Oh, yeah. And so cars would fly. This one big truck with a trailer went flying in the emergency lane and he was like moving in and out and he was angry. People were getting angry. And so, you know, one of the things about traffic is people get frustrated. And so we've got, you know, I mean, we've all been on those, oh, those yeah. situations. That's right. Uh, you know, you're talking about road rage. You wait till you get into a traffic jam where people aren't moving. Mm -hmm. And what's really funny is when we finally got to the cause of it, there were these two guys over on the side. Do, working on something. They were working on some pipe or something. And people were, that's what caused the traffic jam. So if that'll cause a traffic jam, just wait until you have things that are broken down. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So with that being said, you're broke down, you run out of gas, you have all your supplies here. Now you're on foot. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that's another thing, guys. One of the, 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 a lot of people, you know, they plan their bug out bags or you know, their inch bag or whatever they have. Yep. And they're ready to go. And they get one for all their family. And they got 50 pounds of stuff in there and half of it they're not going to use. And then they get on foot. What is the number one thing in the military that starts causing problems? Your feet. Blisters. Blisters. You start getting blisters. If you're not if you're not someone that walks a lot and you've got very callous feet from walking a lot, you throw a 50 or 60 pound pack on pair of shoes, socks, and you take off walking, your feet are going to start sweating almost immediately and you're going to blister up in just a few miles. Right. And you're done. Right. You are literally done after that. When you're, when your feet get blistered and then the blisters pop and then it blisters again and those blisters pop and the bottoms of your feet are just raw, you're not walking. You're not going any further. And now you're at risk for infection and a host and of other problems. you're going through a couple of creeks. That's right. And your feet are wet. You know, so if you do have a bug out bag, I highly recommend putting some extra socks in there. A lot of extra socks and, cha <laughs> and change them often. Change them often. And not just socks. You know, there's there's socks. You know, there's your your gym socks, your daily wear socks. There's socks that are specifically made for hiking and walking that are multi-layered. And the socks will actually slide. They're, they're two layers. They'll slide on themselves. 
and the socks sliding on themselves will help prevent your feet from getting blisters on them. Right. You can also get mole skin and put mole skin on the bottoms of your feet, uh, especially in high wear areas, your heels and the pads of your the pads of your toes. Right. Put mole skin on there, and that mole skin will slide on the socks and help prevent blisters as well. So if you find if you know that you're going to be walking or the potential of having to walk a lot, really really good socks for hiking as well as moleskin for the bottoms of your feet to help prevent blisters are, are a must have. Well, and good boots or yes, shoes, sturdy shoes. Right. Make sure, you know, because one thing I'm notorious for is jumping in my car, running up to the store in my flip flops and mm-hmm. shorts. Yep. And, you know, so now I keep a good pair of boots, socks in my vehicle at all times, just in case. I'm a little crazy like that, but just in case. And what's one of the, what's one of the next things that take you down? Twisted ankles. Right, right. Yeah, you that's true. sprain an ankle, you twist an ankle. Now you're either, you're either moving very, very slow or you're not moving at all. If you're moving slow, you're favoring your other leg, favoring your other foot, putting more wear and tear on that leg and that foot, which means you're going to blister on that foot even quicker. Right, right. So definitely, you know, being on foot is the bottom of the list. Yes. I mean, it is the bottom. It's the last thing you want to do. But... There may be a point. That's I don't right. know if you've ever read uh, the Going Home series by Chris Weatherman or the Angry American. Uh, that is a fantastic story saga. In fact, there's 10 books. Yeah. And and then Chris is or the character is in Tallahassee, Florida and has to get to Gainesville, Georgia, where his family is. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like a bug out. He needed a bug out bag to get to his home, yep. which would be kind of a get home bag. That's right. But it had to be really supplemented in the story and a lot of the things that he had to face. So, you know, I, that's a great book to read uh, if you're really into survival at all. There's a ton of information in there. Plus, it's just a great story. Um, so, you know, big one. Okay, so now if you're on foot, you've got exposure. Uh, exposure in the rule of threes, you have three hours in harsh conditions, whether it's rain and snow and sleet and yep. cold temperatures or <coughs> extreme heat which we see all the time, people out in the mm-hmm. deserts, especially. Right. Here in the South in the summertime, the heat and the humidity, that's true. It just sucks the moisture out of you and you'll, you'll dehydrate very, very quickly. Right. So same thing out West in the desert, you know, it'll, it sucks the moisture out of you and you don't even know you're sweating because the sweat's evaporating. As soon as it comes up to the skin, you look down and next thing you know, you've got this white chalky look all over you. Uh, and that's the salts pu- pulling out of your skin from the sweat. The sweat's evaporating so quickly that it just leaves the, the salt film on your skin. Right. So you got to make sure you have some kind of shelter or whatever. Uh, but that is not, that's a good reason not to bug out. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to find yourself living, you're going to be camping if you're out of your vehicle by yep. this time. And then again, you're going to be exposed to the elements and exposed to security situations. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just make a, a little bit of announcement. Sarah Max watching over there for some, some questions that are pertinent to what we're talking about. Once we get a few, we're going to take a few. So uh, if you have some questions, go ahead and jump over there and kind of throw some stuff in. Uh, Now, again, water, water sources. Yes. Now, you should have some kind of water filtration, not just bottled water, because you may not be able to carry it. Mm -hmm. One gallon is weighs about eight pounds. So you really can't carry, you know, a lot of water with you. Uh, So having a filter system helps to, you know, it just gives you a force multiplier is what it does. And so, but you've got to be able to find water sources. That's right. Uh, I have a good friend of mine that was out West and uh, he was in one of the desert areas. I think he was in uh, Arizona and he and his son were hiking across this one area and there was no water anywhere. Now he had one of the Katydine pros and got finally to a water trough or cattle. Mm -hmm. And there was poop on the side of it. You know, I mean, it was nasty, dirty. Got his Katydine out, put it in, drank the water and it got them where they were going. Uh, so, you know, you need a good filter system that'll kind of get through a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh, one thing that we use here at the house, and again, if you're not bugging out, you're you're bu- you're bunkering in. Mm-hmm. If you're bunkering in, having a water source is still important because you is. could have disruptions with your water supply. And so we use the Big Berkey. In fact, we have the Imperial and we use it every day. Yeah. We use it. We can't even drink our tap water anymore because it's just, it tastes horrible. Yeah, the chemical taste to it with the, you know, your city water that's being brought in, it tastes awful. And you know, our area in Greenville had some of the best water in the country yeah. at one point, but now they've contaminated it with all these chemicals. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we use the Big Berkey. It, it'll filter up to, I think each filter is 3,000 gallons of water. 
And so if you're going to bunker in, that is a great way to have a good water source. Because even if you need to get out of your house, you need to be able to have some security, know how to get your water to you. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things there, which would definitely fold into bugging out. You got to find the water source. Then if you find it, you could be in a security situation because a lot of hunters will wa will hang around watering holes. That's right. That's a Absolutely. great place to be able to hunt, even wild predators. Well, and I'll tell you something that a lot of people don't think about. You're, if you're a homeowner, you're on city water, really consider having a well dug or drilled. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to have a pump or anything put in, just a hand pump. So you have access to water on your property. If something happens, you're... Your city water that's being brought into your house is contaminated for whatever reason, whether it's, you know, some kind of an attack or the system goes down. There's you know, a cyber attack on it that shuts down the water supply. Like our, just like our, just like our fuel supply ha has happened on the East Coast right now. It can happen. Don't think that it can't. And having access to a drilled well to where you can walk out there and hand pump your water is it's invaluable to be well, able to have that clean water. Let's just say right now that this cyber attack wasn't on fuel, but it was on the water system. That's right. I mean, they're talking about even when they get it online, it's going to take 15 to 18 days for the fuel to travel mm -hmm. from Texas to New York. So, you know, guys, you know, this, hopefully they can get this thing straightened out soon, but that's why we always try to be ready. Listen, let me, let me just say this about, about being prepared at all just like with toilet paper and everything that happened last mm -hmm. year is if you already have supplies, you are ahead of the curve. That's right. Because once people start to panic, just like with this gas, mm -hmm. if by the time people are panicking, you're already behind the eight ball. Yep. And so going ahead and getting some of these plans and these things put aside. Yeah. Your friends may think you're crazy. They may walk into your house and go, what's all that toilet paper? Why have you got all that food? Well, which those aren't really good friends. I wouldn't hang out with them, but you know, they may ask you some of those things. And so, you know, you don't want to look weird, but buddy, when it comes down to it, those same friends will be over at your house going, Hey, uh, in fact, I had a buddy of mine that uh, has been prepping for years. His dad used to give him hell for it. I mean, <laughs> Oh, crazy prepper. You know, he's got his stuff. He got... What's funny is at the beginning of 2020, mm -hmm. his dad came to him and said, man, I've been wrong. I've been wrong about this. I'm sorry. I want to apologize. Y'all have some toilet paper we can borrow. <laughs> so, you know, there are people that it doesn't matter what they think. It matters about what you do to get ahead because once it goes, it's gone. As soon as I read this, in fact, somebody sent the link to me about the gas thing last week and yep. I put it up on, on Instagram mm -hmm. and I said, guys, get your gas. And because that was before the, before it really got crazy. That's right. Well, before it was a lot of people really found out about right. it. Right. Right. You know, so we, we see a lot of this stuff because we look for a lot of this stuff very early and recognize it for what it is and the, the potential for disaster that, that can come from something like that, which allows us to be able to get out a little bit ahead of the curve. Right. Um, but for the people that really just follow the mainstream media, they're four day, we're four days in, five days into this before they really start finding out about it. And then you see like what happens today. You know, we got the news on this morning and they're saying, hey, don't go out and panic buy gas. <laughs> you know, that means don't, to panic right. buy. And you know when they say that, that's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, you know, it would it would almost be better if people didn't find out about things like this and just continued on as normal, and you would see less uh, shortages because people weren't going out and panic buying. But sooner or later, those gas pumps are going to be empty. They are going to be empty, so, and, that, and that's what we're seeing now is because people are like, well, I got a half a tank, but I'm gonna go ahead and top off instead of driving another four days just because I don't know if I can get gas. And, you know, we've, we've all done that. You know, we've, all of our cars are full of gas, you know, gas cans are full. So we've got some emergency supply set back just because, you know, it's, it's better to be prepared than to be unprepared. Right. Right. So people are just getting prepared. All right. So I guess you guys are quiet today. Sarah Matt is going to give me a signal when you guys are ready. All right. Uh, so that's a sideline. Now we have, you know, a lot of people, and this is so funny, and, and I want to bring this story up. Years ago, when I first started, I may have been, because when I first started my Suits channel, it was Fun Gun Reviews and Sensible Survival. Mm -hmm. And I had both. 
Uh, and then I switched it to sensible prepper because people were going, you know, people weren't quite, it was before doomsday preppers, which yep. really kind of got the prepping community live, which people thought it was crazy, but they still thought there's a point there. Well, it brought it um, more mainstream, right. a lot more mainstream. Right. So what happened was I had this one guy to get in touch with me and he said, Hey man, we live in Tennessee. He goes, we got a hunting lodge, a cabin. We got property down in Southern Alabama. So if any, and we've got it well stocked, we can go, we can hunt, we can do all this stuff. And we got all our supplies there. So all we got to do is get in the truck and take off. And I said, that's great. That's great. I said, but what if you can't get there? What if you can't? You may have a bug out location. You may have all your supplies. You may have all your stuff there. You're like, you know what? Anything happens, I'm going to be able to get there. You may not be able to get there. You know, one of the things about the, like we talked about, the traffic, that's a problem. You know, another thing to consider is checkpoints. Because if things got kind of squirrely, you could have mm -hmm. military or police checkpoints that are not letting people into the area unless you live there, yep. unless you have property <clears throat> there. Uh, also, you may have roadblocks from people just setting up roadblocks because they don't want people coming into their, their communities right. and taking their supplies. Whether it's setting up roadblocks with cars, cutting down trees, whatever, you know, obstacles and barriers that's going to prevent you from traveling in the direction that you need to go. Right. Or even being able to turn around and go back in an alternate direction. Right. So, I mean, I'll tell you right now, you know, if something were to happen in our area and we were having a lot of problems and there were rioters and whatever else, first thing I'd do is chop a couple of big trees down, mm -hmm. <laughs> keep them out. That's right. So, you know, if I'm thinking that, you know, people are thinking, Hey, we got to protect our supplies. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a good friend of mine that lives up in the Western North Carolina and they, they and a lot of people talk about, man, if we ever bug out, we're heading to the mountains. You know, these sheriffs and these law enforcement agencies up there, they know that people think that. So yeah. they will shut those those counties down to keep people from just pouring in because then it puts a lot of strain on their supplies and their resources. That's right. OK, so those are some other reasons why you don't want to be on the road. Uh, but let's just say that you're, you're going to hunt. I'm going to hunt. I'm going to fish. I'm going to forage. I know all this stuff. Guys, there's only so much out there. Mm -hmm. And when it turns into a crisis, it gets very difficult. That's right. I mean, one of the things about the Oregon Trail was because it, it, it went on for 40 years, mm -hmm. went on from 39 up to about 19, well, 1880 or so. And one of the things that happened was when they first started going on the trail, there was game. There were buffalo, there was antelope mm -hmm. where they were playing, you know, yeah. antelope play. And, you know, there were deer yeah, and all kind of different things. As the years went by, the game was taken out of that area because they were just cleaned out. And so it was harder and harder to find game. You know, it's it's difficult. We go hunting anyway. It is. Sometimes, right. you know, to, to, you don't get a deer every time you run out into mm -hmm. the woods or you go turkey hunting or you do whatever. But if there's a lot of people out there fishing out lakes and ponds, yep. getting all the squirrels, you know, all that stuff. That is, that's something that's going to be a maybe. It's not something you're really going to be able to rely on. Well, and think about this. Say, say you are able to take down some big game. You're able to take down a deer or whatever. Now you've got to process it. You run the risk of cutting yourself and you have to find a way to preserve that food. Right. 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 Whether you're going <clears> to, <throat> you know, you can smoke it or then you've got to build a, a smoke shack to be able to smoke it. But that meat's not going to last very long, especially in the summertime. Right. You know, so you have a very limited amount of time to be able to, to treat and preserve that meat. And do you have the skills to be able to do that, the knowledge to be able to do that, the resources to be able to, to treat and preserve that meat? Or are you going to shoot a deer, cook the whole thing, and, you know, now you've got food for a day and a half, and then the rest of it goes bad? Right. Right. So that's a, that's a huge consideration is how are you going to, if you do hunt, you do shoot something. How are you going to treat and preserve that meat so it'll last you, you know, days and days or weeks and weeks? Okay. I think we have some questions. Yes. Um, should one add heirloom seeds to their bug out bag? And if so, what kind? Should someone add heirloom seeds to their bug out bag? Uh, let me just say this, guys, and, and especially for bugging in, <clears throat> you need to have seed put back. Yep. You need to have seed. Uh, le because let me, let me say this. And yes, I would, uh, the things that you would eat and it's according to where you're going, the things that grow yeah, quickly, that's right. Uh, you know, cucumbers and it, I mean, just things that would, that would do whatever, you know, potatoes, different things. But, you, but if you're bugging out, you, you're really 
putting that seed together for where you get when you get to the location. Mm -hmm. But then you've got to wait some time. That's right. Let me just, uh, I'll tell you a little story. I read this book, it's called Survivors. And it was uh, John Wesley Ross, which is a very famous uh, author for that kind of stuff. And he's, he's great. I, I love his books. One of the things that they did in this book, it was a story where this girl, before this collapse, it was an economic collapse. And she bought all this seed and she mm -hmm. stored it up. Finally, they had to get out of the city. It was, I mean, and that's the kind of thing. If you're in an urban situation, bugging out may be your only only hope. And yep. you need to think about, you know, I mean, that that's a whole another can of worms. But, you know, one of the things that she did was, is her husband was killed. So she took those seeds and she went to this town that was a, a good distance off. And when she got there, the town, the business had stopped because mm -hmm. the economy had collapsed. Inflation was running wild and businesses weren't open. She ended up renting this place with some silver that she had and she set up seed, just a lot of seed. And then people came in and traded. They traded things that were that were needed yeah. and it became a trading post because she had all this seed. And that's a cheap way to get into something. But yeah, I highly recommend having seed. Let me tell you where we live in South Carolina, which is a good growing area. We have a long growing season. Almost year round. Almost year round. We yeah. had about a month, a month where we didn't start bringing in vegetables mm -hmm. because we had, you know, collards and, you know, certain kinds of leaf lettuce that we yep. could grow on out, <clears throat> cauliflower, those kind of things. And so we grew in stages. So you might want to think if you're planting a garden, think about your early garden, think about your summer garden, think about your fall garden. That's right. And so, yes. Yeah, right. And you know, here we've got our winter garden too, you know, your winter peas and things like that. So there, there's crops that we can grow year round here. Carrots. That's right. Different things. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, Andrew Cook asked, any ideas for like a kayak, kayak camping equipment and bag setup? Hey, listen, this is what's funny. My brother, my brother is a big kayaker. In fact, I want to bring him on one, one week when we do a thing. In fact, he and I are already talking about doing some stuff because he's been kayaking for the past 40 years or, mm -hmm. you know, or fishing anyway. Uh, he's a big fly fisherman. He goes to Florida. He goes all these different places. Used to be a guide for Orvis. Uh, and he does... Uh, he does a lot of stuff where he goes to Florida, gets in a primitive campground, sets up, and then goes fishing for days down in the Everglades or or in different places. And uh, he has a lot of information. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with kayaking. Um, one of the, I guess, one of the big problems is sometimes there are waterways that are under private ownership, and sometimes people get a little squirrely. But mm -hmm. they, they, most of them, they let you access through. You just can't get on the on the land. Right. But yeah, I mean, that would definitely be a thing. One of the, the problems would be is that if your kayak turns over, you lose all your supplies, you know, making sure that, you know, you have contingency plans. One of the big things, if you're a kayaker, is to have an extra oar in your kayak because oars get lost. And my brother's yeah. laughing about it. He said people laugh at him when he shows up and he has two oars. And they're like, what do you need two oars for? He goes, just wait. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, somebody in the group will lose an oar and yep. he'll go, here you go. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, it's little things like that, making well, sure your stuff's waterproof. And investing in some good dry bags. Yeah, dry <clears> bags. <throat> there, right. there are some excellent, excellent dry bags that you can get. Pack all of your perishable items, anything, your extra clothing, anything that you don't want to get wet or lost pack it in your dry bag, roll it up, seal it, store it in your kayak, either behind your seat or in, up in between your legs, you know, especially if you're on, if you're on fresh water uh, or not, you know, really rapid rivers and stuff, store it in areas in your kayak, distribute the weight evenly, but dry bags are invaluable because you can pack a ton of stuff in there. And once you seal them up, most of your dry bags will float as well. Right. That's right. That's right. Uh, Martad asks, how do you store food and water in your car year round? I live in Greenville too. It's hot and it's cold. How do I store the food in the vehicle? Well, one, that's one thing you're going to have to be careful of, mm -hmm. obviously, and really rotating it out, which is a pain in the butt. I yep. understand because I'm the world's worst. Uh, usually what I do is like in my, my go bag, I'll put the food down into it. So it's kind of insulated into the rest of it. And what I use is, is lifeboat food, which is not very vulnerable to temperature fluctuations. Uh, lifeboat food, it's a square like this. It has 3,600 calories for the bar. And so it really helps. Uh, but if you're putting cliff bars and things like that, they'll melt. They mm -hmm. make a big mess and, you know, it causes a problem. Uh, water, definitely. Again, I would make sure I had my water filter, some kind of water filter system. Uh, you know, whether it's a Katadyne, you know, Pro or, or some of the different ones. I mean, there's a lot of different ones out there. 
One thing I like is just the Frontier straws, the Frontier Pro. I mean, I think it'll filter like 30 gallons of water. Yep. It's just really small and I can keep that handy, but I like to have a good filter. So I wouldn't rely too much on carrying, you know, portable water because again, if you need to evacuate your vehicle, you're not going to be able to grab all that water. It's going to be too much. So I think I would really kind of watch having, you know, some kind of water filtration system, but having water in there, you want to kind of switch it out if yep. you can. And one good thing that you can do, if you put a cooler in your, in the back of your vehicle, that's a good you idea. can put your water in there. You can put your, your perishable bars or your stuff that's going to melt. You can put that in there and just throw one of the cooler packs in there. Uh, you know, the, your little uh, freezer cooler packs. That's a good idea. Throw one of those in there, close your cooler up, seal it. And it's going to be good all day long, no matter where you go, what you do, leave your car. You, if you need that water you're, and food, you're going to be able to come back out there and you're going to be able to access it. Well, you know, even putting that stuff in a cooler without yeah, anything that's right. is going to insulate it somewhat. It uh, you know, back in the Old West on the Oregon Trail, one thing they would do is they would take smoked bacon mm -hmm. and they would put it in a barrel of bran and they would cover it up and it would preserve it. Yeah. They wanted to make sure it didn't have the temperature fluctuations. Mm -hmm. So a cooler would be kind of like that. Yep. I mean, I it think was. that's a great idea. Absolutely. I thought about that. Uh, furry tree dweller asks, question for the guys, which do you feel is better for old school load bearing equipment? Y suspenders or H? Um, I think, I, I think either one would be fine. I think it's just been an, an upgrade in technology, but uh, I would probably say H uh, gives you more of the upfront. You come across here than just kind of riding on your back. But what I, do you prefer, think? I prefer the H as well. It gives you more support. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to give you more support in your back. It's going to kind of even it out, yep. especially if you have a sternum strap. <clears throat> uh, the white, now as far as load bearing, like mag magazines and things like that, H again. I mean, I like the plate carriers and things like that. So yeah, I think H is a, is a is an advancement yep. in plate carriers. It, it just gives you the ability, even though it weighs a little bit more and it's a little bulkier, it gives you the ability to be able to distribute the weight more. Right, right. I mean, you could put magazines, you can put med kits, admin yep. pouches, whatever you wanted to. Yeah. Uh, Jason Crystal Bonner asks, what are your thoughts on this gas scare right now? Just heard that already some of the gas stations in some states are already having gas shortages in the upper states. What about the southern states? Yeah, same thing here. We're already seeing shortages in the southern states as well. Uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, we're already starting to see some shortages here. And we're looking at like, even if they get the, the pumping stations and everything back up and going today, it's still going to be like two to three weeks before they can get fuel pumped back across the nation and start supplying all of the uh, all the filling stations again. Yeah, we're, we're in a situation right now. North Carolina just last night yep. declared a state of emergency. Uh, I have friends of mine in Western North Carolina that just said there's nothing up here except diesel. And then we had another girl that got in touch with us from up there in that same area. And she goes, yes, there are gas stations that are out, but there are some that have it. Those won't last long. Uh, a few years ago, we had a when I think there was a hurricane out in That's Texas right. and the refineries were hit. And guys, there were times where we would pull up to a gas station and there were like 100 cars yeah. packed in there and people were just filling up. And then once it ran out, people just had to turn around. One well, time, I tell you, every gas station that I've passed today and I've, I've been on the road a lot today, every gas station that I've passed had lines of cars waiting to get gas. I'm glad I, you know, I went when I first saw it, when yeah. I first saw it and I, I posted. So I took off up to the gas station and honestly, I was a little surprised because mm -hmm. it was on Fox. I mean, it yeah. was on the, the the main page. Yep. And so I go up there and I get my gas. I pulled out my, one of my Jerry cans that I got from Sportsman's Guide. Yep. I got $20 off. <laughs> I did. Shipping. I bought those. Yeah. I got free shipping. Yeah. <laughs> I got a whole bunch of Jerry cans. I got free shipping. I was like on in heaven, you know, but uh, I took the Jerry can. It's one of the, the seven and a half gallon mm -hmm. tanks. And so I filled it up, stuck it in the back of the car, went home. And so then uh, I took another car up yesterday because one car, my wife had been traveling some, so yep. she had run it down. Took another Jerry can, which I already had some filled, got that filled up, went ahead. If you've got lawnmower cans, I mean, listen, don't want to incite panic. And somebody in the comments will go, you're inciting panic, whatever. I'm you're my audience right now, and I'm just going to tell you right off. Go get some gas if you if you can. That's and, right. And fill some cans up. Because it's, people are going to do it anyway. Here's the thing. It's like toilet paper. It's not like you're not going to use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gas. Yeah. Eventually, if everything normalizes, so you got an extra 10 gallons at home, pour it in your car, you know, 
it's it's not like it's going to go to waste. But I can tell you right now, we are going to have some problems. We're going to have some issues. At first, when I first read it and I posted that, I was like, guys, I just want to advise you to get some gas. I want you to top off your vehicle. In the article, it said, this is probably not going to be a problem. And you know what? I was like, okay, great. That's right. Great. I'm not going to panic and go, yeah, whatever. This is going to be the end of the world. No, I just thought, hey, you know what? I'm going to get some gas. Mm -hmm. So when you see things like this, don't go, ask, no big deal. Pay attention because it doesn't take much just to fill that tank up, just to be on the safe side. Again, like Robbie said, you're going to use it anyway. That's right. Well, you know, perfect example. How long did it take last year for grocery stores to run out of everything? Yeah. Just a couple of days. Yeah. And boom, the shelves were empty. Only thing that was left was vegan stuff. Now, think about this. Speaking of grocery stores, what about the trucks that bring your groceries to the store? That's right. What about gas shortages on that end? Mm -hmm. What is that? And to the rising gas prices, it affects everything you do. It affects Amazon, UPS. That's right. The postal system. They all run on fuel. There's, America's run on trucks. There, there's definitely some pretty significant downstream effects from this that, that, that a lot of people I don't think are, are recognizing for what they could be right now. Right. This is a ripple effect. It is. Now, there are some other pipelines that are working that are going to be helping supplement some gas. So I just want to put that out there. This doesn't mean the end of the world. But, you know, what I think is really funny is, is now that Biden shut down two major pipelines mm -hmm. voluntarily. <laughs> you know, maybe we should open those back up. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Renshaw asked, do you recommend renting a storage area to store items? Let me tell you what I've done. I did this years ago. There is a video on Sensible Prepper, and I still have it. It's having a storage cache or cash. I always want to say cache. Cash. And me and a buddy of mine, we rent this storage unit. We keep essential survival items in that unit. It's a small unit. It's, it's a real small unit, but we keep both of us split it and we keep some food items, some survival items or whatever else in there. That is a brilliant idea. Now, don't, you know, you, you got to be careful because if you put firearms in there, you know, that, that that's a liability. So you just want to you want to be careful is all I'm saying. But yes, I highly recommend having an off storage site to have some of your supplies. You could come home one day and your house be ransacked or under attack. I mean, I know that's extreme and that's zombie apocalypse stuff. But I'm just saying you may not be able to get back to your home. So having an off-site location with needed supplies is just smart. And if you never use them, big whoop up is probably right. three or four hundred bucks. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay, that's it. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and move on. Okay, we appreciate the questions. Thank you. Now, which leads us to the next point is civil unrest. Uh, we have seen civil unrest all in this country for the past couple of years. Yeah, that's right. It's been out of control. Uh, and so, you know, we can't always depend unless you're in Florida and they're not going to put up with it. <laughs> I love I love DeSantis, man. So, um, you know, civil unrest, that is another thing that could happen. If you're bugging out, you could find yourself in a in location that with civil unrest. That's right. And which could cause whatever. You know, we could have civil unrest over this gasoline thing. I mean, people start fighting at the gas pumps and having problems. So, you know, it that that's the thing about when there are issues that happen crisis people's tempers start to get shorter mm -hmm. and so you know just make sure you keep a level head and you know one of the things i said in my urban survival video was have good communication skills and what i mean by that is is know how to de-escalate a situation you get yourself and if you're on the bug out you need to be careful not to let your ego get you but to back out of situations let it go let it happen you know what this is my family we're getting the heck out of here yeah you're the best you're the boss i'm out of here and let them win but just get out so um you know civil unrest all right one thing is too unsanitary conditions mm. uh you know when the the oregon trail and I, I keep bringing this up because it's fresh on my mind but that was one of the things that happened was one out of ten died out of four hundred thousand people that went yeah. on the oregon trail forty thousand <clears> people died the vast majority were people that had got sick. They got sick. They got dysentery. They got cholera was a big one. But a lot of that had to do with, you know, just getting sick and not having the weight. And you're yep. out. You're vulnerable. You're stressed. Yep. Listeria is another huge one yep. from contaminated water. Right. Right. Uh, listeria is a huge one. And that's one of the things that, you know, if you see any type of grid down situation where your water supply is compromised, listeria is probably going to be one of the first things that start killing people. 
Mm. Uh, and listeria is basically, it's contaminated water from poop. Um, you get fecal matter in the water and that fecal matter, uh, it breeds listeria. Listeria will kill you. All right. Uh, and that's one thing that one of the big, big reasons why it's so important to filter your water. If you don't have a way to filter your water, at least boil your water right. for five minutes before you drink it. Uh, but you have to have clean water and unsanitary conditions. You're going to see that almost immediately if we have any kind of water issues. Yeah, definitely. If you don't have a water filter, boil your water, strain it, pre-strain it first, get all as much as you can out mm -hmm. of it. Of course, obviously having a little bit of Clorox or bleach would That's help. Right. And iodine. Save, iodine pills. I mean, there's a lot of different things. You, you can treat the water. The one thing I like about a filter is that it takes away the taste that's and right. it takes away the debris. Yep. So that's the big advantage of the filter. So obviously, and we're getting right next to it, sanitary conditions or unsanitary conditions leads to illness, but it also, you can have injury. That's right. You can get hurt. And so, you know, that is a big, big thing that can happen. You know, you can be cut. You may not have medical attention. That's right. You know, even in a grid down situation, a lot of times the hospitals can still function and you may have limited access, especially people that are really injured or traumatic hurt. injuries. Right. right. A lot of times that's still available. So, you know, when, once you leave your home, you're just going to be out there and not knowing where you, you know, where medical help may even be, that's even right. if you're still in your vehicle. So definitely that's a big one. Uh, now, well, and having a way to treat illnesses and a way to treat injuries yourself. Uh, because you can't get to a hospital or there aren't hospitals or or medical personnel available to treat you. Having a way to be able to treat yourself, to be able to suture yourself, to be able to close wounds, to be able to clean wounds. Um, and then you've got infection that could possibly. you got to have all your right. antibacterials to be able to prevent infection, whether it's creams and stuff or even, even some antibiotics that you've stored up. But those are things that you really, really need to have on hand and keep on hand. So you can go to GoMedGear. Dot com and, <laughs> and build your own kit and build your own kit it's a byok well you know it's like emodium yeah which is something that you know if you get <clears> dysentery <throat> and you're just you're draining you're being become dehydrated yep. you know that is one of the problems okay so then we go into which we've really been around civil unrest is criminals and gangs and a lot of times this criminal element takes advantage of bad situations that's right uh, again, you're vulnerable, you're out there on the trail or you're out there, you could be with a large group, which I highly recommend. If you're going to bug out, you want to really try to connect with some people. That's right. Uh, you know, kind of like circle the wagons, get some people together, because if you're, if it's just you and your family, the lone wolf mentality will get you killed. Mm -hmm. It'll get you killed. And, you know, it's funny back in the seventies and eighties, that was the big thing. I have my stuff and nobody's getting it. I'm going to be right here and blah, blah, blah. You know, you can't stay awake 24 seven. That's right. You, you just can't do it. So you got gotta... my trusted friends right. right there with me. You know, right. so I can protect them. They can protect me. And you know, you're know, you just happier because you have other people around you. You have people you can talk to with commonalities, with values that you can talk to, work through situations. Everybody's going to be able to bring different skills to whatever the situation is. So it just makes for a better a better environment. It really everyone. does. It really does. So, um, OK, now. Now, let's say this, you know, what are you going to do? You abandon your home, you leave, you go somewhere else. What, how are you going to make income? Mm. You know, how are you going to work? And, you know, guys, here's the thing. Uh, even with bugging out, bunkering in, whatever. So a lot of these things can be temporary. Some may stretch out. Some may just be a disruption in certain areas. There may be still areas. I, I'm really thinking about um, Argentina back in 2000s when they had their economic collapse. And that was one of the things that happened. There was all these things we're talking about were happening. That's right. People that were bugging out were getting massacred and their stuff was taken and their women raped. And I mean, it was crazy because the gangs knew that's what they were doing. Some yep. of the cartels. And so, you know, really uh, it doesn't mean that it's just back to the stone age. It may mean that there are certain areas that are having problems. It could be a lot of different things. And that's one of the reasons why I call this the sensible prepper channel, because we're not looking for the zombie apocalypse. Mm -hmm. We're looking for just you could have a personal SHTF all the way up in between. And so being prepared to face what you can in between those. Well, look at all the natural disasters we've had across our nation this year. Texas with their snowstorm, you know, freak snowstorm right. wipes out everything out right. there. Right. Hurricanes on the coast, tornadoes through the Midwest and you know the middle of our country. All of those things are SHTF situations that affect you and those around you. It doesn't affect, it might not affect anyone 10 miles from you right. or 20 miles from you, but 
you and your personal situation right there, you're directly affected by the SHTF situation. And those are the types of situations that on a day-to-day -day basis, you need to be prepared for. Right, right, that's right. Okay, uh, now uh, again, location. Location is a big one. Mm. And you know, if you're gonna plan it, you need to plan a location anyway. Again, it goes into your bug out plan, but you need to make sure that that location is set. And you know, it could be with family and friends, that's but right. you need to make sure that you have that location. Um, okay, now if you're out on the road, cell service, yep. GPS. Uh, I did a video a while back. I went up to Classic Firearms and went on a warehouse tour. In fact, my largest video is on the warehouse tour. <laughs> Coming back, it sent me, I, I came in from this direction. It sent me that direction on the way out. And I thought, oh, this might be quicker. I got in the middle of nowhere up near Rock Hill and some of these places in South Carolina and lost cell service, mm -hmm. and my GPS was spotty. It yep. kept coming in. What was even worse is they had a bunch of new construction, mm -hmm. and they were not picking it up. It was saying I was off the road. I mean, and it got really crazy. I'm going to tell you what saved me. I mean, I would have found my way to 85 sooner or later, but what saved me was I had roadmaps. That's right. Roadmaps. I had a roadmap in my bag. In your bug out bag, get a roadmap of the area. I know we don't even look at roadmaps anymore, but get a good roadmap. Well, you know, it's the thing. Up until and a compass. the last 25 years, everybody used maps. Yeah. yeah. You the, plan out your trip on right. the map. Absolutely. You know? The last 25 years, we've gotten away from using maps, learning how to read a map, how to map out a, a path where we're going. The last 25 years, we've gotten away from that because of, because of uh, electronics and everything. And now we're almost solely dependent on our GPS on our phone or in our car or whatever to get us where we're going and get us home. But having a map is invaluable. If you're traveling outside of your state, even if you're traveling inside of your state in an area that you're not familiar with, get a map of your state. So, you know, if something happens with that GPS, you can be like, you know what? Phone in the floorboard. Let me break out my map. <laughs> It'll take you a couple of minutes to figure out exactly where you are. But from that point, you can be like, oh, okay, I'm here and I need to go here. And you can follow your map right to where you need to go. Invaluable. Gives you road names. Gives you, I mean, it's old, it old school. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, if nothing else out of this video, if you don't get anything else, yep. go to a travel center, especially these truck stops and places like that, or even sometimes uh, welcome centers when you go into a, in a new, new state. state. That's right. They have maps. Get you some maps. Put them in your car. And I tell you, the first time you're in a location, the GPS on your phone goes out. The GPS in your car is not picking up where you're at. And you reach over in the dash and pull that map out. It's got dust all over it and everything. You <laughs> blow it off. You open this thing up. The peace of mind that you have when you're like, oh, okay, I'm right here. And I need to go here. Oh, easy. The peace of mind is invaluable. It's absolutely <laughs> invaluable. Ah, all right. So we've already talked about medical, but definitely medical. That's one thing that you need to consider. Um, you know, trauma kits, things like that. I mean, GoMedGear.com. Yeah, GoMedGear. If you have a child <laughs> that falls and a stick goes through their arm, you're going to want to really seriously have a trauma kit That's to be right. able to take care of that and hopefully get them to medication. I mean, get them to some kind of medical help. But the big thing, and you should have that when you're bugging in, That's or bunkering right. in. <clears throat> but, you know, making sure that you give give people, a, a, you know, an extended chance. Um, <clears throat> you got to consider your pets. Absolutely. Food supply. Pets, food supply, yep, yeah, that too. And you may end up helping helping them out, even if you know. But um, you know, well, I guess I that. But um, yeah, you know, having your pets, taking care of your pets, getting them where you're going. So mm -hmm. um, that's also another consideration. We're starting to get close. Okay, private land access, access to private land. You yep. may be traveling on foot, and you find yourself on somebody's private property. It's a good way to get shot. It's a good way to find yourself in jail, even because this is one thing that uh, Profile said in the it's the book is is the Argent what happened in Argentina is the modern survival guide for the coming economic collapse. I highly recommend you read that. That'll put your mind in a different place when it comes to bugging out and and that was one of the big things he talked about was people got together and those yep. are the ones that survived. They worked together. But one of the things he said was he goes the police won't be, be there to protect you, but they'll be there to arrest you. Mm -hmm. And he said, the problem is a lot of times in these situations, they're overtaxed, but sooner or later they can get to you if they need to. Yep. And so, you know, you could find yourself in jail. You could, another thing too is guys, if a, in a bug out situation, if you're carrying a firearm and you don't have a concealed carry permit, you could find yourself in jail. 
I know a lot of people say, well, the Second Amendment's my uh, permit. And I, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, laws are what they are. And even if they're unconstitutional, you could spend time in jail. A lot of people that are waiting on Supreme Court decisions are in jail. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, it's your right. I'm going to do it. But guys, I highly recommend that you have your concealed carry permit unless you're in a state that has constitutional carry, which mm -hmm. is a beautiful thing. And then you should be able to carry anyway. Uh, but that's it. OK, so and then last but not least. And most importantly, a plan. Having a plan. Having a plan around bunkering in. I mean, that is huge. You you need to have some plans set aside to think, not just, oh, I got a full pantry. Oh, I've got some extra toilet paper. Oh, you know, I've got I've got a few gallons of water stored up. Mm -hmm. You really need to have a plan about what you have, how long you have. That's right. It'll get number one. If you know, kind of have a general idea, it gives you kind of some peace of mind. It's uh, having a plan for a bug in situation or a bug out situation is no different than that roadmap. It gives you a charted course of where you're going on a daily basis. That's right. Just like a budget, just yep. like a financial budget. That's I, right. I'll never forget years ago, I was young. This girl told me she was just talking about it. She said, you know, she goes, I always had all these things in my mind, this bill, that bill. I got to pay for this. I got to do that. She said, once I wrote it down and just wrote it down, it kind of brought everything together. And then I had more of an idea, which mm -hmm. is a very simple thing. But a lot of people don't do it. That's right. Just have it planned. Same thing with bugging out. I mean, or same thing with bugging or bunkering in. That's right. Is have your list set up and know what you have. OK, you know what? With the current food I have, I'm going to and you can estimate it. I have three weeks. I have three months. I have mm -hmm. a year, whichever, however prepared you are. And that way you can say, OK, we have a year before we're going to really need to do something different. That's right. And, you know, what are our plans to get there? So bugging out, guys, it is the absolute bottom of the list, last resort. It is an emergency, and there is no other choice. That, there's just no other choice. See, a lot of people go, and I remember I used to get these questions. They'd say, well, when, when is it a good time to bug out? When it's the end of the road, you have no other choice. <laughs> now, sometimes you can see telltale signs that are saying, uh, you know what, guys, I, I think it's about time. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that just one thing. Uh, but, you know, definitely – Bugging out. Don't make all your survival plans around the bug out. Make it on being where you are, staying now again. And this really kind of is, is kind of a caveat. If you live in an apartment in the middle of New York City, there may be something different there. But That's you right. need to have a real strong plan. You may live in, you know, some major metropolitan area and you're like, wow, um, you know, stay there as long as you can and then when things get really squirrely you know you got to have your plan that's right whether it's going to visit friends and family stay with them for a little while until whatever is going on uh, passes but having a plan and having a place to go if you're if you're not able to stay in the city right and with something like that you know the big thing too is not waiting until the last minute right not waiting until out. it's too late that's right yeah if it's safe to get out but you see the signs mm -hmm. you know what maybe you're just like you know what i don't know what's going to happen i'm just going to take myself and my family out to see my brother out in the suburbs or out in in another area that's right and we're going to spend the weekend or we're going to spend a week over there yep and just watch things and see what happens and then bunker in with them that's right. all right so we're wrapping it up uh, i really appreciate you guys we will have a list of these things down below uh but guys we're seeing it now more than ever with 2020 mm -hmm. and with the the covid deal and the lockdowns and the grocery stores you're, you're also seeing it when you go to Home Depot and Lowe's, you're seeing lumber prices Ooh. go through the roof. You're seeing steel prices, metal, all these things going up. Food prices are going up. Now gas prices. What that is, is, and they won't admit it, but that's inflation. Mm -hmm. And the the less, if, if a loaf of bread costs $3 now and it costs a dollar less, that means your dollar just lost about two thirds value. So, Guys, just get yourself in good shape, prepare, and bunker in. That is the place to put your put your plans, your, your majority of your plans. And so, all right, so we really appreciate Robbie Wheaton for being here. Great resource for Glock aftermarket parts. That flat face trigger that they have yes, is sir. the best on the market. 
Uh, and then, of course, uh, a lot of other custom gun work. You can check out wheatandarms.com. Also, uh, Go Med Gear. Robbie's just expanding, you know, and uh, Go Med Gear for your medical supplies. Well, you know, I'm just trying to provide things that people need. Right. You know, well, the, it goes with your, what you do. It does. It does. And, you know, those are those are both resources that you should absolutely have. You know, you've got your, your firearms to be able to protect yourself. You've got your medical kits to be able to protect yourself as well. Right. And that's right. That's the ultimate protection. Also, we really do appreciate Sarah Mack for being here and answering and kind of monitoring things and, and giving our questions, setting this whole thing up. Uh, and don't forget, Sportsman's Guide, you get $20 off every $100 or more purchase using Such in the coupon code. If you go to Facebook, there's a link, actually. You can just click on it. We can't put those links here on YouTube. But all you got to do is just put Such, zero, put Such, no zero, zero, yeah. just put Such. And I'll tell you, it works because I use it all mm -hmm. the time. So, uh, and the Buyer's Club. Yep, got to sign up for their Buyer's Club as well. Buyer's Club, you get free shipping on all of your items that you order. Uh, big bulky stuff, jerry cans, to be able to store gas in, whatever, water storage, free shipping on all of that. Yeah. So Buyers Club will pay for itself. Make sure you sign up for it as well. Yeah. And those guys are great. So we really appreciate you guys hanging out with us today. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.